Hello guys and gals, and welcome to our class video about the computations associated with parallel lines and transversals. Our learning goal for this video is that you'll be able to use properties of angles on parallel lines to calculate angle measures. Okay, so first we kind of need to talk about what these properties of angles are, right? Okay, so all the properties I'm about to describe to you apply only if the lines cut by the transversal are parallel. We represent this in the picture by drawing an extra arrow on both of the lines. Okay, That extra arrow is symbolic to mean that those two lines are parallel. Okay, So if the lines cut by a transversal are parallel, then three specific kinds of angle pairs are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent. So, for example, those two angles are congruent. It also applies to the other pairs of corresponding angles in the other corners. Additionally, alternate interior angles are congruent. So, for example, those two angles are congruent there as well as the other pair of alternate interior angles. And then also, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So, for example, those two angle pairs are congruent. Okay? And again, it applies to the other, the other set. Okay? So, now, in the case of same side interior and exterior angles, these angle pairs are supplementary. So, if I have same side interior angles, okay, I can't, well, to draw the picture for this, I can't use the congruent symbol because the angles aren't actually congruent. I'll label them like angle one and angle two. If they're supplementary, what could I say about them? Well, we know that they would add up to 180 degrees. So I could write measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180. There is no symbol to put on a picture to show that things are supplementary. Okay, and likewise, same side exterior angles are supplementary. Again, remember, some textbooks or sources call these consecutive interior or exterior angles. Okay, so in that case, I could put angle 1 and angle 2 there and still say that measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Do you notice a pattern? in which pairs are congruent and which ones are supplementary? Well, one thing you can look at is to notice that, oh, when the angles are alternate interior or exterior, then we know that they're congruent. When they're same side interior or exterior, we know that they're supplementary. Additionally, you can verify that you're remembering it correctly by recognizing if the angles are acute or obtuse. For example, on the alternate interior angles, or alternate exterior angles, these congruent angles are both the same type. For example, here, the ones that I've labeled in this picture are both obtuse. Now, it's possible if it was the other set, they'd both be acute, so don't you know bang on them just being obtuse, but it's possible for obtuse angles to be congruent to each other. That kind of verifies your thinking. Likewise, for the specific angles that I've drawn on the alternate exterior angles picture, okay, these are both acute. It is possible for acute angles to be congruent. Okay. If I look at the pictures for the same side, interior and exterior angles, one of them in each picture is acute, the other is obtuse. Is it possible for an acute angle to be congruent to an obtuse angle? I don't think so. It is possible for these two angles to be congruent if they are both 90 degrees, if the transversal was perpendicular, but that's the only case. So, in this case, if we have one acute and one obtuse, they're adding up to 180. Again, remember, this only applies if the lines cut by the transversal are parallel. Okay. So now that we've established that, let's look at a few example problems. Here's example one. We're given that measure of angle one is 120 degrees 
and we're asked to find the measures of all the other angles. Wow, that seems kind of daunting actually, but it's actually really, really simple. Okay, well, if I know that angle 1 is 120 degrees, then how much is angle 2? Well, because 1 and 2 are a linear pair, I would know that angle 2 needs to be 60 degrees. Okay, so from there, well, I have a pair of vertical angles at this intersection, so angle 4 is 120 degrees, and angle 3 must be 60 degrees to match the angles on the opposite sides. Then, since I know that the lines are parallel, notice the extra arrow here on the diagram, I know that each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. So 1 has to match 5, 6 has to match 2, 3 has to match 7, and 8 has to match 4. There, I found the measures of all the other angles. And in fact, if you notice, when those lines are parallel, all of the angles that are obtuse are congruent to each other, and all the angles that are acute are congruent to each other. So, that's not too bad. Okay, so, let's look at an example that requires a little bit of algebra. Alright, so, here we're given that the measure of angle 2 is 2x plus 62 degrees, and the measure of angle 8 is 8x plus 78 degrees. Hmm. So I need to set up an equation I can use to solve for x. In a type of problem like this, it can be helpful for you to ask yourself two questions. First, you can ask yourself, how are these angles related? And then second, from there, are they congruent or supplementary? Well, in the case of these angles here, we know that angle 2 and angle 8 are same side exterior angles. We learned from before that those angles, being on the same side, are supplementary. We can confirm this by recognizing that one of them is acute and the other one is obtuse. So, it makes sense for those to be supplementary. Okay, again, this just verifies what we already know. Okay, so from there I can write my equation. I can say 2x plus 62 plus 8x plus 78 equals 180 degrees. Okay, then all i got to do is solve it. Combining like terms, I would get 10x plus 140 equals 180. Subtracting 140 from both sides, I would be left with 10x equals 40, and from there we can see that x equals 4. Am I finished? Nope. Always make sure you go back and answer the question. We're asked to find the measure of angle 2. So, if I substitute the value for x equals 4 back in, this would be 2 times 4 being 8 plus 62. That adds up to 70. Whoa, what happened there? Okay, so there we go. If we needed to, we could plug it into the other one and check. If we plug into for x equals 4 into there, we would get a total of 110. That verifies that we did our algebra correct because those do actually add up to 180 degrees.